Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I've sat down to film. I missed you so much. I'm glad to be back. And today I am getting ready while testing a few new products and then I filled in the gaps with some of my recent favorite products from Sephora. Right before I left for vacation last week, my new Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Unlocked Tiger Palette arrived. I did unbox it. I looked at it. I just took in the glory. It is absolutely stunning. I love this packaging, but I haven't swatched this or played around with it yet, so I'm really excited to test that. I also have this relatively new Pat McGrath Labs Mothership Moonlit Seduction Palette. This I have played around with quite a few times off camera and I've really enjoyed it. I also have this new Huda Beauty Faux Filter Luminous Matte Concealer to try today in the shade 1.7B. But I am going to begin with skincare because my skin is feeling incredibly dry at the moment. A couple weeks ago, Dr. Dennis Gross and his team held an event at one of the hotels down on South Beach and I got to attend and have a one-on-one -on -one consultation with him, which was such a dream come true. I asked him all of my burning skincare questions and then he made product recommendations and this was one of them. It's the Dr. Dennis Gross Vitamin C and Lactic Acid Dewy Deep Cream. I've been using this now for a few weeks. I really like it because it's very thick and rich. He also recommended his new vitamin C serum, which I've been using, as well as the extra strength daily peels every single day. He said my skin could handle it. But I have been using my Obagi retinol, which is why my skin is incredibly dry right now. I don't even think this rich moisturizer can help me. I just need to cycle off for a couple days, give my skin a rest, which is what I usually do. I cannot use that retinol every single night, but I'll do two or three times a week. We talked about products, but we also talked about treatments, and I know I've mentioned it before, but I am very interested in doing Morpheus 8, which is a high-frequency microneedling. It's not a laser treatment. It's in supposed to be incredibly painful, but very effective. The before and afters are amazing, and it depends who you go to. Your provider makes a huge difference, but if you go to somebody really reputable who knows what they're doing, you can see amazing results with texture, hyperpigmentation, with lifting, firming. It really does boost the collagen in your skin. You start creating your own collagen, which is the key. But he said that he likes Morpheus, but he's a bigger fan of Qterra, which is the treatment that they do in his office. It's, I think, the same radio frequency microneedling, just a different name, a different device. So that is something that I need to look into, Qterra. I pulled up some information on the Sephora app for the concealer. It retails for $29.00. It's a buildable creamy formula that can flex from medium to full coverage while it visibly brightens and conceals. It's fragrance free, long wearing, crease proof, and made to move with you. It has a huge doe foot applicator. You almost struggle to pull it out of the tube, it's so big. So I'm just gonna use a teeny tiny bit. I definitely think this shade will be light enough to brighten my under eye. My eyelids are also a little bit dry, so this isn't the best day to properly test a concealer. I'm going to keep using it after today's review because I think anything would look a little bit funny. So now I'm picking up the Mothership 10 Moonlit Seduction Palette from Pat McGrath Labs. It is such a pretty palette. You have the really beautiful sparkly shades down here, a handful of mattes in there, a great brow highlight, inner corner highlight, deep shade for depth and dimension. The layout I think is pretty standard for the Pat McGrath Labs Mothership palettes. I think if you are a collector of Mothership palettes and you have them all, this is probably a pretty boring launch to you because even with the few palettes that I have, I think I only have four, maybe this is my fifth palette, I can see a couple kind of dupes in here, maybe not the exact shade or identical, but close enough. There are some repeats. However, if you're new to Pat McGrath Labs, I think this is a beautiful color story because it's pretty versatile. I actually took this with me to Isla Mirada last week and I didn't do anything sparkly. I didn't do anything fancy, no smoky eyes, but I just did, you know, a couple shades in the crease, a little bit on the lid, a little Dee, 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 something soft and simple and it was very versatile. So starting with a Refer 16 fluffy brush, I'm going into this top matte shade right here. 
This is basically the only transition shade you have in the palette and it's pretty deep so we're going to start pretty light and then slowly build up the color. I'm starting with the outer crease and then I'm going to slowly work my way in I know my face looks so funny right now because it's so shiny, but trust me when I say I'm desperate for the hydration. When most of the product has been distributed, I'm going to blend right on top of the crease to make sure this is nice and soft and blown out. If you didn't know, my husband and I were in Isla Mirada, which is part of the Florida Keys last week. We were celebrating his birthday. We usually try to get down to the Keys for his birthday every year, so this is a trip that had been planned since, I think, February. I always like to look really early in the year for deals around this time because you can usually find some great deals. This is the slow season for Florida. It's back to school. It's incredibly hot. Once it hits November, December, then things really pick up, but you can find some great hotel deals. In September October I was actually so stressed before we left because at the time it was Fiona that looked like it might be heading straight towards South Florida and I wasn't sure whether we needed to cancel the plans just in case so we, we could be here and then it ended up going out into the ocean a little bit and further north so we got really lucky with Fiona but of course now we have Hurricane Ian which is on its way to Florida, we have the outer band started yesterday, so we have pretty grim weather outside. It's not too bad yet. I'm sure later tonight and tomorrow the winds will pick up, but South Florida it looks like it's going to be spared at this point, but unfortunately that means it's going to hit central Florida, and I'm from Tampa. My parents still live in Tampa, so I am crossing all of my fingers and just hoping and praying that Everybody is okay, everybody's prepared, and it's not that bad. Next, I've picked up a Sephora 19 crease brush. This is one of my favorite pro brushes, and I am going into this deeper shade. It's more of a plum, still kind of a mauve plum down here, and I'm going to use this to build up a little depth and dimension in the outer V. This is a little bit darker and a little bit more purple than that first shade. I'm trying to keep this pretty low in the crease. But so we've been watching the Weather Channel for weeks now, just keeping our eyes on all of these developments. It's a little bit stressful. On the one hand, you feel nice and prepared because you're staying up to date, but it is very dramatic. And they've already started saying this could be the storm of the century and how catastrophic it would be for Tampa. Tampa's not prepared. You always prepare for the worst, hope for the best. Being a born and raised Floridian, you kind of learn to take everything you hear with a grain of salt. As long as you keep your head on your shoulders and you're prepared in advance, you don't really have to panic last minute. Going back with my original fluffy brush, I'm just blending those shades together. And of course, I've been in close communication with my parents. They are safe. They're actually not in Tampa at the moment. They're at the place in Pennsylvania. I had plans to join them next weekend, but it looks like those plans might be put on hold. Don't really want to be flying in a hurricane. We're just kind of waiting to see what happens. With a flat shader brush, I am going to pick up this shade right here. It's this really pretty pale shade and this is going on the inner lid. I do want to say thank you to everybody who's reached out and sent well wishes and told me they were thinking about me. We are safe. I was so nervous we were going to have bad weather last week but it ended up being beautiful. We really lucked out. A couple days there were afternoon showers but for maybe 30 minutes and then it stopped was basically blue skies the entire time. But it was so hot. I think it was 93 degrees the day we left. And just no break from the sunshine. Same brush, I just wiped it off. We're gonna pick up this shade right here. This is kind of the star of the show. It has that duochrome astral finish. 
and I'm going to lightly pat that on the outer lid and kind of blend it into those plummy shades. The hotel where we stayed last week is called Chica Lodge. It was my first time ever staying there and it is hands down the best place we've ever stayed in the Keys. I had heard really nice things and I think my husband had been there for a work conference a while ago, but wow, it was so beautiful. Our room was amazing, which I knew it would be because since it was a birthday trip I and I was getting a great deal, I think I used hotels.com. I splurged for a king suite, so it had a beautiful bathtub, an incredible ocean view, but besides our room, which was amazing, the actual property was incredible. They had pickleball courts, which we played every day, tennis courts, kayaking, bicycling. There were trails around the property. They even have a nine-hole golf course, which unfortunately they were doing construction on, so that was not available. I wasn't too disappointed. I didn't even realize there was golf there but we will definitely be back when the construction is done. And the staff was so friendly. It reminded me of Disney, how you walk around and everybody who works there is so friendly and smiley. Next, I'm picking up a Ruffer 13 brush going into this deep shade right here. I'm going to pack this very low in the outer V area, kind of the outer lash line. For me, one of the highlights of the week was going to Pierre's for dinner. It's a pretty iconic restaurant on Isla Mirada. It's beautiful, great food, and they're known for their sunset view. So we went the first night, but we missed the sunset, and the food was amazing. The service was so great. We figured, okay, we'll just come back tomorrow, and we'll try to make the sunset. We still basically missed it, uh, but we did a better job, so I have some really beautiful pictures. The sun had already gone down a little bit, but the sky was stunning. So we got to sit out by the water and just relax a little bit before dinner with a glass of champagne. It was so nice. And it's only an hour and a half drive south of Miami, but you truly feel like you're somewhere in the Caribbean. I'm just going back now with a completely blank brush and I'm just blending any area that looks a little bit harsh there's anything that looks like it needs an extra little blend, just tapping that real quick. I really didn't have much fallout, but I quickly cleaned up my under eye area and I blotted with a paper towel. And now I'm going in with my current favorite foundation. This is the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow. It is amazing. This immediately went to the top drawer and it's kind of replaced the Guerlain, which was my go-to favorite. I finished that bottle and I sort of thought it would be silly to replace it since I already have so many foundations, but I would have had it not been for this foundation. A little bit goes such a long way. It has a beautiful finish and I just love the coverage. It's so perfecting, but doesn't look really heavy. I did my best to kind of exfoliate the under eye because there were so many dry patches, so it looks a little bit red, but Hopefully, it will make a nice canvas for the concealer. I'm curious to hear from you. What is your current, current favorite foundation? Share with me down below. I would love to know what you guys are currently loving, what you're using, what do you keep in your top drawer, or what do you use as your everyday foundation? Do you wear foundation? I hear from a lot of people who don't really wear foundation anymore. Next, I'm going back in with the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Luminous Matte Concealer. Do a little bit on the chin. Using the Sephora Pro Concealer 57 brush, I'm going to kind of lightly start to blend a little bit, but I'm not going to blend it all the way. Oh yeah, that's full coverage. Oh my goodness. Going to create a little crisp line up here. But then that's it. I'm just going to leave it like that for now. Doing my concealer trick. I really do 
do this every single time I do my makeup. I was hoping to use the new Chanel primer today. I did order it from Chanel.com. It's a luminous hydrating primer. It hasn't arrived yet, but it should be here later on this week. So as soon as it arrives, I will be doing a full review. I also ordered the Huda Beauty Cherry Blossom Powder. I'm so excited. I had a gift card to Sephora. Well, not a gift card, but a rewards card. So it was $2. I could not resist. I went ahead and ordered it. I saw somebody posted on TikTok that it was back in stock and I ran to the Sephora website and I ordered it. Unfortunately, it sold out so quickly. I heard from some people who were interested in trying it, but they couldn't get their hands on it. I don't know why it's so popular. They just can't keep it in stock. I have the Huda Beauty Banana Bread Powder and I love it. I don't mind the fragrance. It is heavily scented, but I just have been on the hunt for a completely matte light pink setting powder. So I'm excited. I will also test that soon. Now that this has had a minute to dry down, I'm going to mist my face with a makeup setting spray. This is the Too Faced Hangover RX 3-in-1. It is actually not. <laughs> I used that up, but since I can refill this travel size bottle, this is actually the Tatcha Dewy Skin Spray. Don't want to waste plastic if we don't have to. And mist the entire face and this should help revive the makeup. I love the Tatcha Mist. I think it's a great combination with the foundation which is more of a soft matte. And now I'm going to blend it out all the way. So pretty. It's looking really nice. I'm glad I kind of scraped my skin. Otherwise it would have looked really patchy and bad, but it looks nice and smooth. And I can properly review the concealer now. And I like it. I definitely like how brightening it is. So the shade is a great shade for me. I love how full coverage it is, but it doesn't look super heavy. Right now, I'm impressed. I think it's a beautiful concealer. I've been using the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin. Wow, do I love that concealer. I've never felt strongly about the Charlotte Tilbury concealers, but it is a favorite. So I love the Charlotte Tilbury. What other one have I tried recently? Oh no, the Too Faced, of course. The Too Faced Ethereal Light, beautiful. Less coverage than the Charlotte Tilbury, and I think this might even have more coverage than the Charlotte Tilbury. So it depends on what kind of coverage you like, but the Too Faced, the Charlotte Tilbury, and the Huda Beauty are all really good. Before we open up the Hourglass palette, which I'm so excited, I'm going to set my concealer. I like Hourglass setting powders, but they're a little bit too light and luminous, like a little bit too much like fairy dust. I prefer to use those as a finishing powder at the end of the makeup. I still want something that is truly matte to set the concealer and then this section right here of my cheek needs a matte powder. Otherwise my pores will look huge. I already have big pores, which is completely normal just means that I'm human. Seeing pores is not the worst thing in the world. It's just not the desired makeup look. So I would rather set with a matte powder here. It's time to add some color back to my face. So I'm going to unbox this Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Unlocked. And I chose the tiger motif. All three were beautiful, the elephant, the butterfly, but this turquoise with the tigers, stunning. I absolutely love this. This is available right now at Sephora, but you can't customize the palette. Since I ordered mine directly from the Hourglass website, you could pick your exterior packaging and then choose the shades inside. And I went with palette two, or the shades number two. These two shades at the top are finishing powders. This is my strobe powder or my highlighter. That's gonna be too dark for my skin tone, but I can definitely still use it on my body. I can use it on the eyes. All of these shades I will get use out of. And then I have a beautiful luminous bronzer and then two blush shades right here. I just picked up a clean powder brush and I am going to go into the bronzer. I 
I really like that this bronzer has a touch of warmth to it. It's kind of a coppery undertone. I love both of these blushes. I don't know which one to use. I think we could test out both. Okay, so on one side, I'm going to do the lighter blush, and then on the other cheek, I'll do the deeper blush. This is the center shade. It's pretty bright. It looks a lot lighter in the pan, but it's pretty bright on the cheek. So pretty. It also has luminosity to it though, so right now I have a lot of shine going on. This is more of a deep rose. It's really pretty. And it has more of a matte finish, you can tell. I quickly went back with a little Chanel loose powder just to kind of help blend everything together. I think it looks really nice at the moment. And then I picked up a BK Beauty 201 brush. I really don't think I need highlighter because the cheek products have a little sheen to them. So I'm just going to take this fluffy brush. I'm gonna go into the finishing powder and I'm gonna use this as a highlight. It's going to be pretty subtle as a highlight, but it does have some glow to it. So it gives more of a softer lit from within glow, which is a nice balance since the eyes are going to be a little bit deeper and we have so much glitter up top. It's kind of better to keep the face a little bit more matte. I picked up a pencil brush. We're going back into Moonlit Seduction to finish the eyes. I'm gonna pick up the very first matte shade and I'm going to very lightly buff this beneath the lower lash line. I'm going back with a blank fluffy brush and I'm just going to make sure that's really soft and blended. I'm back. I quickly filled in my eyebrows off camera, did black liquid eyeliner on the top lash line, I extended a wing, and then did the inner mini wing. And now I'm going to finish the eyes. I pulled out this kind of taupey brown eyeliner. This was sent to me complimentary from House Labs. It is the Optic Intensity Eco Eyeliner in the shade Deep Bronze Shimmer. I think this is the perfect shade. I don't want to do black on the inner waterline. I could if I wanted to take it extremely smoky but I think this will be a better alternative just to fill in that little gap it's very pretty there are a couple products I really like from House Labs. They sent over a large box and I played around with a couple things, most of it actually, off camera. I even filmed a couple videos with some of the products then I ended up scrapping them because I didn't like the way the makeup turned out. I never tried House Labs when it first launched when it was available at Amazon. Since the new launch in Sephora, you can tell it was a major upgrade. The packaging is a lot better, the marketing is a lot better. But overall, I would say, if I'm being honest, I think the brand is still kind of middle of the road. There wasn't anything I tried that I was extremely excited about. I think the bronzer was pretty, the highlighter is okay, it's very shimmery, there's a lot of micro glitter, the eye paints, similar to Danessa Myrick's, were not very good. I do really like this eyeliner. I would say the eyeliner and the bronzer, which I have here, it's nice and creamy. These were my two favorite things from House Labs and the lip cream. Going back into my palette, I picked up a little precision brush and I'm going into this shade right here and I'm going to use this to highlight the brow bone. I've reached a point where I get sent a lot of PR every week and I don't say that as a brag because I look at it as work, kind of a little bit of an obligation every time I receive a package. Sometimes it's something that I've signed up for or something I've requested to review. Sometimes brands just send items, but 
nobody is ever sending you a package just for fun because they want to treat you. It's not a gift. Nothing in life is truly free. These are packages that are sent from marketing and PR professionals from their office or their home office, and it's part of their marketing budget. So I think in many cases, there is an assumption that you will post about it in some capacity. Maybe it's just a quick Instagram story or part of a PR haul. I do my best to show you everything that I'm really excited about. If there's something that I love that I would spend my own money on, I'm going to show you. But I don't show you everything because it's just a bit overwhelming. I don't want to open things and use them once on camera just to show you and then never use it ever again. So I kind of filter most things. I have a huge pile set aside for giveaways. I recently donated a huge bag of products. I give things to friends. <laughs> Although most of my friends don't really wear a lot of makeup. So I do my best to make sure it doesn't go to waste. I'm really trying to be as intentional as possible with everything I kind of bring into my space. And I've started turning down PR packages when I receive emails or questionnaires to sign up for things. Unless it's something I truly want to try, I, I just don't need it. I only have one face and I'm no longer really accepting a lot of PR boxes anymore. When it comes to the house labs or brands that are really big and I think there might be some interest, I do my best to share with you. So if you're interested in hearing more thoughts on House Labs, I can tell you what I think, but for the most part, I would say it's kind of a, still a mediocre brand in my opinion. Nothing to get overly excited about. So now with an angled brush, I am going to dip into this right here. Hopefully it's not too flaky. There's kind of lunar blue. It's really beautiful. This I'm going to try to pop on the inner corner of the eye. It's a little bit chunky, so I don't know. Oh no, it's working. Just very lightly popping that on the inner corner. Ooh, it's so pretty. I do think to avoid any fallout on the cheeks, it might be best to wet this. Let's see. That looks so pretty on the inner corner. You know, I'm gonna use my finger, this bottom, and I'm gonna pop a teeny tiny bit of this right in the center of the upper lid as well. Did that do anything? I can't tell. A little bit, it's pretty. I think that's one of my favorite shades in the palette. You just have to be careful because it's a little bit flaky. So if you're gonna use a lot of it, like on the top lid, I would use fingers or a wet brush. My current favorite mascara from Sephora is the new Makeup Forever, the Professional. It's double-sided, but it is amazing. One of the best mascaras I've tried in a really long time. I'm usually pretty stubborn. <laughs> I have my few mascaras that I love and I basically stick to them. But this is really great. Kind of surprised me. So first I'm going in with the step one side, which is going to separate the lashes. And the wand is so teeny tiny, you can get right up to the lash line. And depending on how much volume you like with your mascara, you do wanna go in with step one, then step two. Don't just skip to step two. I made that mistake the first time. But I saw somebody using this mascara the other day in a tutorial and they just use the little wand because they like a lighter mascara look. So if you like lighter lashes, you can skip step two. I like to do one eye at a time because I don't want the mascara to dry down and then have it not really work with the second brush. So I'm going in with step two. You can see it's a really tapered wand, which I love. Makes it very easy to get the inner corner. And this is going to build up the volume. I'm gonna lean in close so you can really see this is with mascara and without. This is obviously more of a date night, weekend, 
going out, dressing up, makeup look. It's a lot of eyeshadow. It's a lot of makeup. But I think for maybe a holiday party, this would be a really fun look. I don't have any new lip products to share, but I've basically been rotating between all of my new nude lipsticks from Chanel. So this is the little combination we're gonna go with today. I pulled out the Iconic Nude Lip Liner from Charlotte Tilbury. Not Pillow Talk for a change. Or Pink Venus, those are two of my favorites. So this is a little bit more brownie. I'm going to overline just a little bit and then I am going to blend the lip liner in. Next, I'm going to apply the 194 Sensibilité. This is the pinkiest of the new nudes. And I'm gonna to top that off with one of my favorite glosses. You can see it's almost empty. I'm convinced I can finish this before the end of the year. There's this much left. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Champagne Diamonds. I wear this constantly. If you're ever not sure what lip gloss I'm wearing, it's probably Champagne Diamonds. It looks so pretty on top of everything. I just fixed my hair. So this is the complete makeup look for the day. Overall, I am so happy with the way it turned out. I love playing around with this eyeshadow palette. Today, I wanted to show you what a smokier, more dramatic look would be like. But again, you can use this palette for more natural, everyday eye looks. I would say Moonlit Seduction is one of the more neutral mothership palettes. It's definitely one of the more neutral palettes that I have in that, yes, it does have sparkle and glittery shades, but no real pops of color. I mean, these are all sort of neutrals, even the plummy shade, it's more like a mauve. It doesn't translate to purple on the eye, which I really like. I love all of these, I love the golds. I played around with just doing a little bit of this on the lid, a little bit of that on the brow bone. You can deepen it up a little bit if you want to, but this right here is kind of the perfect, I don't know, everyday quad. You really don't have to go dramatic. I will even go so far as to say this is one of my favorite Mothership palettes or one of the favorites in my collection. I don't have all of them, but it's a bit more wearable, I would say, than even the Divine Rose. Divine Rose 2, definitely, I never really grab for that anymore. I do think I'll get more use out of it closer to the holidays when we just have a lot going on, a lot of events, parties, things to go to, because it's more of a special occasion palette. I mean, nobody's purchasing the Pat McGrath Mothership palettes because they want a natural, easy, everyday eyeshadow palette. These are meant for fun, they're meant for drama, but I absolutely love all of the sparkly shades. This gold in the corner, I know I didn't use it today, but I've used this wet all over the lid and it is amazing. It just looks like gilded, molten lava. It's so stunning. So this I really enjoy. I'm also a huge fan of the Hourglass palette. I knew I would be. I didn't really have any doubts about placing this order. The colors inside are very beautiful. Do you probably have something similar? Yes, of course. I probably have similar shades if I pulled out all of my Hourglass palettes, but it's not gonna stop me from collecting these palettes every year. And this packaging is by far my favorite. They did such an incredible job. And you can read about the artist who created all of the artwork that they used. Really magnificent. I love the attention to detail. I don't usually love a luminous bronzer, but I thought this went on really nicely. It doesn't look muddy at all. The two blush options are great. There's not a huge difference between them. One is luminous, the other is matte, but they're both stunning. And the only other new product I tested today was this Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer. And so far, it looks really good. It is very full coverage, but it does look really smooth. I probably used more than I need, 
it looks really great even on my very dry under eye it's looking really beautiful so i'm gonna have to wear this a couple times and i'm gonna keep testing it and playing around with it but so far so good it's really nice and that completes today's video thank you so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed it if you did give it a thumbs up leave me your comments questions down below as always i will be linking everything mentioned everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience and for more videos like this don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell